enemy. Bon God. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we got the full chapter summary of the spoilers for 1095. This shit's insane. Make sure you guys drop a like and subscribe. Keep supporting the channel. We're so close to 3,000 subs. Enjoy. Starting it off, the chapter is officially named A World Doesn't Worth Living In. I don't know if that's spelled correct, but whatever. Chapter starts with the Vice Admirals preparing to help St. Saturn, but Saturn orders them all to stand down and says he could easily dodge Bonnie's attack if he wanted to. Then he pulls out the sword and the blood just disappears like that. Moving on, Kazaru apologizes to Saturn. He's still on the ground unable to move, and Saturn hits him with the Your work is unusually slow this time, considering Kazaru's a bum. Saturn tries to stomp on Luffy, but Frankie extends his arm and saves his captain. Luffy is still conscious, but he doesn't say anything in this chapter. Vegapunk, Bonnie, Sanji, and Frankie are unable to move due to Saturn's mysterious power. If this is not a scientific power, it must be a devil fruit. We finally get to see a little flashback of Kuma telling young Bonnie about Nika. Kuma makes Nika's drum rhythm sound and they all dance together. This is very interesting, guys. Kuma tells Bonnie that he wants to be the hero who liberates people just like Nika. And we move on to the present. Saturn says Kuma is part of the buccaneer race. The people who committed a crime in the past. Buccaneer race seems to have blood of the giants, making them unusually strong. And a new flashback starts 47 years ago in Sorbet Kingdom. Kuma was born into a normal family. Shit's getting crazy, guys. The information about Kuma's blood got leaked to the world government. So Kuma's entire family was captured and became slaves. After his mother's death, Kuma's father tells him about the legend of Nika. Kuma's father says it's a legend that's been passed down among the Buccaneer race for a long, long time. He then makes the Nika drum rhythm and starts dancing. But he was shot in the fucking head by a Tenorupu, a celestial dragon, for making too much noise. Cut to 38 years ago, we see the Celestials explaining that once every three years, the Celestials come down from Mary Jo's and conducts a human hunting game on a non-government island. Hence, God Bad. We also now learn that God Valley was located in the West Blue, in the land with many resources, and they dare use the word God in its name. The king of God Valley tried to stop them, but he was killed by St. Figurland Garling. This year, the game hasn't started yet, but Garling is one of the ten Europos expected to be champion. Young Garling was very handsome, with half moon hair, no beard yet. Many celestial dragons are swooning over him. Saturn is also on God Valley as well, and he looks the exact same that he does in the present. Do you know what this means, guys? Saturn and potentially all of the other top five, and maybe even Emu, all have immortality. Do you guys think it was all passed down through Law's Fruit? Saturn receives words that the buccaneer child, the slave, who escaped, was captured, hinting at Kuma. Then, in the last page of this chapter, we see Kuma being dragged into the field by other slaves. This is part of the flashback that Bonnie saw. Then suddenly two shadows appear, a mysterious person. Hee-haw! Hold right there, you guys. You must be the buccaneer, the star of this. I see what they mean. You're indeed huge. They say the blood of the giants run within you. We can see the two mysterious shadows are two child slaves, a young Emporio Ivankov and a girl named Jenny. Ivankov looks pretty similar to her adult appearance, and Jenny is a short-haired, smiling girl that is eating a piece of meat. Oh my god. You guys think this is potentially Bonnie's mother? Or Luffy's mother? I just feel it's weird that they hinted at the piece of meat. Like, kind of hinting that she likes to eat meat and someone has a big appetite. And we know two people as of right now that do have that. Then we can see Ginny says, Isn't my big bro here huge too? Talking about Ivankov. And she says, Just the face though. Wait, that's not the point here, dummy. Ivankov Dunn talks to Kuma. She says, I choose to live. What about you? End of the chapter. And unfortunately, guys, there's a break next week. If you guys all enjoyed this video, I'm going to say it again. Make sure you drop a like and subscribe. Share this to your friends and hit that bell so you never miss a daily anime content.